Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Pedal Shift Project. The Pedal Shift Project is a series of conversations, thoughts, and experiments around the bike touring lifestyle. From tips and tricks to ideas on how to ride your ride, let's shrink the world by bike. Show notes and more are available at pedalshift.net slash 108, and you can email the show pedalshift at pedalshift.net or call the voicemail hotline 202-930-1109, and you can check out Pedal Shift on all the socials as well. I'm going to take a quick look at the camera and say, we are live, baby, live here for episode 108. Hello, everybody. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for joining in podcast land as well. This is the first time I've ever done a live show, so this is kind of exciting. And I'm unveiling my Puget Sound Brompton mini tour for this episode. Um, It's super exciting. I have been putting this together over the last, oh, I'd say a couple of weeks or so. And I'm really excited to share that with all of you right now in this episode, this mini-sode of the show. If you would like to see some more video of me talking into a microphone and including some witty banner and maybe some edited things like, say, my dog Gizmo barking like he just did, but you didn't hear that on the podcast, did you? No, you did not. But you do if you watch the live feed, like uh, approximately 21 people have uh, are doing right now. So um, that's super exciting. This is like a time machine kind of a thing that we're talking about. Um, I'm uh, going to be this going to be a little looser of a show probably as a result. So uh, I hope you all enjoy as I you know, share this exciting news. Um, let me start off by saying that uh, I have been wanting to do another Brompton ride. Uh, Brompton tour for a while, but I haven't. I haven't in the last couple of years. The last time I did one, as you may recall if you've been listening to the show, is going back uh, a couple of springs ago. It was uh, two Aprils ago, and I took the relatively new Brompton um, across the country and went to Big Sur and really, really tested out the low gearing of that bike. And it went out really, really well. Um, I was very excited. I was able to get over some of the big climbs in Big Sur, and it worked out great. This March, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be going to uh, the Puget Sound area, and I wanted to do something that really tested the portability of traveling by Brompton. So uh, it, it's going to be something that, um, well, I'll get into more detail on all of that as we go along here. The one caveat that I want to say here is that I'm going to pull the plug on this if there's a coastal storm, but not if there's normal rain. March and the Puget Sound area, and I know that I've got a few folks in uh, the live uh, feed right now who can attest to this, um, not exactly the greatest weather in the world, but also not the worst necessarily. It's likely it's going to have some rain every day. Um, and it might actually be a little bit on the cold side. And so I'll be kind of taking all of that into factor. But if there is not a real coastal storm, I'm intending to ride through this. I'm only going to be riding for about three days for all of this, um, but a really fun three days. And I think that, uh, Factoring in the Brompton elements of all of this, I think this is going to be a really, really cool tour, and I'm excited to share this with all of you. Um, so let's see. <laughs> how How is this going to start? The reason why uh, this is happening is um, I have a trip set for Seattle for a week uh, in early March. And so I thought, well, I've got a bunch of things that I want to do over in the Northwest. I'm planning on coming down to Portland, of course. I usually do. And... Um, you know, I uh, I thought, why don't I see if I can squeeze in a ride in the early part of the week? So after doing a bit of research and kind of getting to the point where I was really interested in doing something having to do with the Brompton, I came up with a crazy-ass transit plan. Um, for those of you who are interested in the minutia of how one gets from one place to another, here we go. So the Brompton and the uh, setup that I have is going to be even lighter than in the first uh, tour that I did with this. I've really pared things down. I've upgraded some of my gear. I now don't have as heavy of a sleeping bag. I now have a better pad. Everything is much smaller. So what I was able to do was get everything down into a much more... uh, manageable package to carry because that's the one thing that I found that was kind of difficult during the California ride. That was 
It was difficult once I uh, took everything down and apart and had to carry things or roll things. And that was the thing that I wanted to try to be able to improve upon for this one. So I'm still rocking the Pathless Pedaled uh, uh, patented uh, backpack dowel trick. So it's up on the back of the bike. And folks who are with the live show, uh, I'm going to look at the camera right now. I'm actually, that's, that's, that's the bike in the back. I'm going to lean away from the microphone. See, there it is. So we're going we're gonna to look at that in the post show. So um, you'll get to see it a little bit better. Uh, on the front of the entire uh, uh, bike, I've got a brand new system and I'll be showing that off. I've got a video that'll uh, do a better job of showing that off for you all. Um, a new system and it, it carries better. That was the thing that I was running into with my Ortlieb trick. Uh, we talked about the dowel trick. This is the Ortlieb trick. Um, and it held a lot. It was waterproof, but it didn't carry very well. Um, I don't know about any of you who have Ortlieb back rollers, but when you use the shoulder strap, the weak point is the fact that it is using those uh, lousy plastic buckles and they're weight supporting. And I found that that was a really bad way to carry a relatively heavy bag. So I've got a new system, a uh, new setup, not as waterproof, but I've got some uh, ways of dealing with all of that. So that's the excitement that I've got with um, uh, sort of the, the bike setup. Things are a little bit lighter, a little bit better, a uh, lot more manageable in terms of getting around. And that is really, really good because... I have got a, <laughs> I've got, I've got a planes, trains, and automobiles or buses, if we want to be more specific, kind of route to get me from DC to Potlatch State Park. Um, I uh, describe it in my show notes because I can see them right here as a crazy ass transit plan. So my plan is I've got an 8 a.m. flight. Uh, I would love to be able to bike to uh, a national airport in D.C. It's just on the other side of the uh, river from where I live in DuPont Circle, D.C. It's not a very long bike ride, but I am not a morning person. And in order to get at uh, to an airport at 7 a.m., to be able to get my stuff together, that would require me to be leaving in the six o'clock hour, probably a little bit earlier. So it's more likely that I'm going to be doing a, a car share or relying on uh, my lovely girlfriend to drop me off. She doesn't know this right now, but I don't know. Maybe she'll do it. <laughs> It'll be great. Um, so in any event, uh, either bicycling or getting a ride to National Airport. Now I'll be on Alaska Airlines. Alaska Airlines is kind of great for flying with bikes. I've talked about this on the show. Um, if I, one of the things that I thought about was actually bringing the full size bike with me, uh, because I can fly that for free now. I happen to be an MVP member. Uh, wait, uh, MVP elite or whatever it is. I'm like, I, I got superpowers because I flew to the Northwest a lot last year. So now I can check two free bags. One of those bags can be a bike and it's free. Kind of cool. Um, but I'm decided to bring the Brompton. So I'm only going to be checking the one bag and it'll be that backpack that uh, for those of you on the live show, you can see it right there. Um, that's going to be uh, coming in the belly of the beast. The uh, shoulder bag that goes on the front it's going to be coming on the, uh, well, it's going to be coming on the plane and I'm going to fold up the Brompton and I'm going to get it in the overhead because that's the way you do things when you tour with the Brompton and it's a lot of fun and I always love taking the picture of it and you will see a picture of it in the overhead, assuming they don't make me gate check it. We'll see how that goes. Um, so the flight across to Seattle will get me there just a little bit after 11 a.m. and I have a very tight schedule. I'm not going to kind of belabor it too much, but it's going to be basically a light rail from SeaTac to the ferry terminal. I'll be taking a ferry to Bremerton across the way there. It's about an hour or so, unless I catch the fast ferry, but I don't want to belabor things with the scheduling on this. From there, I can, I can take two different buses that are run by Kitsap County uh, Transit, and that's a bus to a bus, and that will drop me off at Highway 101 on the uh, Olympic Peninsula, uh, not far from Skokie. Skokomish, Skokokum, Sko something. I should have written this in the show notes. It's a town that's on Highway 101. And uh, then I'll be uh, bicycling, actually doing some actual bicycling on that first day, a full 10 minutes to the north of there to Potlatch State Park. Um, and that's where I'll be laying my head down for the night. The uh, transit um, system works so that all of those uh, later things, the ferry to the two buses, they're designed to work together um, according to everything that is on Kitsap County Transit. 
So we're going to be testing that. <laughs> we're going to see how that goes. If um, for some reason I miss any of these transit connections, it's going to be a lot more riding for me on that first day. Something that I kind of didn't want to have to pull off after sitting on a plane for all those hours. So um, it, it, it'll get me to the campground with a couple of hours or maybe an hour or so until sunset, um, which will allow me to get the tent up and all that other kind of stuff and relax and uh, basically collapse and go from there. Uh, from there, it's going to be three days of riding. I'll be going to Lake Sylvia State Park which I actually should have done the first time I did the Pacific Coast. I actually passed by it and kept going and ended up having some hellacious headwinds while I was trying to get to Bay Center, Washington. And ended up uh, ended up just bonking out in one of the worst hotels that Aberdeen had to offer. And uh, so anyways, Lake Sylvia State Park in uh, Montesanto, I believe is the name of the town there. Uh, or Monsanto? Montesanto. You can tell I am not familiar with this area of Washington State. Uh, from there, it's and Lake Sylvia is supposed to be a really good park. I'm excited to try that one out. Uh, I'm thinking of, for my recommendation for the Pacific Coast Tour, making that be a uh, cutoff point because otherwise the book suggests a really long day in there. And I think that Lake Sylvia is a good cutoff. So it'll be interesting to check it out. I'll take some pictures and some video and stuff like that. And you guys can all see that as well. Uh, you folks. Um, Bay Center, Washington is going to be the next stop. Now, there's a couple of different options, and it just sort of depends on what I'm feeling there. Um, Bay Center's got a KOA, and it's also got, I believe it's called Pioneer County Park. I think it's it's one of the county parks that is kind of uh, a good option in those areas. It's another county park up in uh, on the other side of the island from Friday Harbor in San, the San Juan Islands. It's a really good stop uh, to do that. Um, so I'm really excited to uh, go there. Um, the KOA actually is kind of nice. And I know I kind of diss on KOAs, but it actually was pretty good the last time I was there. So if I'm needing a shower, if I'm needing, um, <coughs> excuse me, laundry something along those lines, then I will be staying at the KOA. If I want kind of to be on the water, Pioneer County Park is where I'm going to be. Uh, I don't think they've got showers. So um, that is what I am going to check out. Um, so Bay Center, the next day, I'm going to be going to Astoria, and I'll be riding into Astoria triumphantly, probably in the rain. And there is an afternoon bus that'll get me to Portland, and where I'll be spending the next couple of days from there. So not a crazy trip, not a very long trip, but it's a nice long weekend, or actually it's pre-weekend. I'll be finishing up in the weekend. I'll be starting on a Wednesday, if I recall correctly, uh, and riding Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and I'll be in Portland uh, later that evening, and I get to hang out with family and maybe some friends as well. So that should be a lot of fun before I go back up to Seattle and fly out middle of the following week. So that is the excitement. That is sort of the overall idea for the ride, and I think that... Um, it's it's something that I've been sort of as I've been packing things up, I've been getting a little bit more excited more and more as time has gone by. So, you know, sometimes I, I think that when I come up with tours, I think that they're a terrible idea. I kept looking at what the possible weather was going to be like in the area, and it could be dropping into the 30s at night, and it could be raining all day every day. But frankly... It sounds like kind of a fun one. I am also really excited about the concept of getting really packable and having the ability to get the Brompton onto all of these different transit conveyances. I've talked about fast forwards a lot. Um, I'm hopefully not going to be doing any actual fast forwards other than the sort of very first day that'll get me within a stone's throw of uh, Potlatch State Park. So I'm kind of excited about all that and looking forward to it. I wanted to talk a little bit about my pack list because I alluded to it before. I really pared down my pack list so that I can get a little bit more, not stealth, but nimble so that it's really easy to get uh, the, the backpack is completely stuff contained. I don't have stuff hanging off of it like I did last time. And then the shoulder bag is going to be a lot better as well. So what's going into the bike? I'm going to have, by the way, all this is going to be in the show notes at pedalshift.net slash 108. So you can check that all out. Uh, number one, I've got the tent, the same tent that you've been seeing in all the images for the last bunch of years. Got a sleeping bag. This is the uh, down sleeping bag that I got, uh, I believe, a year ago. And I've been really, really into it. It packs down so small. Folks, the rumors are true. Down's pretty good for, uh, you know, packability and warmth. It's really great. So I'm a big fan of it. Uh, got a new REI sleeping pad to replace the one that I had to duct tape the valve shut on the last tour. So, um, yeah, that was probably a good idea. I'm excited about that. Sadly, it's not orange. It's red, but in the right light, looks a little orange. So 
So we'll just have to go with that. Uh, in terms of tools and things like that, uh, the Brompton has a pump that is built in on the frame, which is really great. I've got a multi-tool, which I got from Clever Cycles. Shout out to you in Portland, Oregon, uh, as a gift uh, a couple Christmases ago. The toolkit fits inside the tube uh, when the bike is folded. And that is a really cool thing to have. And it's got all the different various types of wrenches and things like that that are helpful even a little patch kit that goes in there so it's it's pretty cool i'm pretty excited about all of that uh being sort of inside the bike i am going to bring a spare tube i am uh riding on uh schwalbe marathon pluses on this ride i've never gotten i'm going to knock on some wood here right now i i think that came through maybe that came through on the live feed maybe not um Oh, my my knocking, of course, woke up Mookie. So can you see Mookie now? There he is. Uh, on the live feed, you can see Mookie. Um, that's bad because <laughs> now that he's awake, things are going to go crazy. Um, uh, but I digress. Uh, what I was talking about, oh, the, uh, the Schwab Marathon Pros. I've never had a flat on one of those. I do know that the radial oh, tire wires can't get through them. Yes, they can. They can, sir. Um, but I am also uh, hopeful that I won't have to use the spare tube that I'm going to bring. I have been living in mortal fear of getting a flat in the rear tire because, as we all know, you always get the flat in your rear tire because it's a lot harder, right? But with a Brompton, it's one of those funky kind of like uh, things with the, the the internal hub. And I still don't understand it. I've watched, I think... 800,000 YouTube videos by various people changing the rear tire on that, and it still terrifies me. (laughs) So one of these days, I'm going to have to actually do it on my bike, but I am so terrified of doing it. I'm so positive that I'm going to screw it up that I don't want to do it. So uh, let's just just say we're not going to get a rear flat on this ride. That would be awesome. But if it happens, I've seen enough YouTube videos that I think I can fake it, and we'll see what happens from there. Uh, Additional stuff in the pack list, a uh, spork, because folks... You're a fool if you bring a spoon and a fork. They make these things called sporks. You should bring a spork. I have a plastic spork. I reuse it all the time. I love it. I love the spork. Um, the thing that I was thinking of not doing this trip was not bringing a, uh, a stove. And then I thought to myself, no, no, sir. You want coffee every morning, so I'm bringing a stove. I uh, am going to be bringing the old S-Bit stove. Now, if you're not familiar with S-Bit stoves, they are super light. They are made of titanium, so it is literally a couple of ounces at most. I mean, a couple of paper clips. Uh, but it uh, takes those little tabs that are essentially sort of solid alcohol. They are not as good as other types of stoves in terms of how much heat they put out, but it's super light. It's super easy to get through, and I'm not going to have to stress about finding fuel. So I'm excited that that is going to be my stove of choice so that I can have a stove. I'll have the cook kit as well so I can boil some water. I'll bring those via coffees because I do think that the one thing too many is to bring my full grinder set and the AeroPress and all of that. Um, I can always stop for better coffee because I'll be going through some towns. Uh, Hopefully I can get better than via, but I'll have that if needed. Bandanas, I'm going to be bringing three orange bandanas, people, because bandanas, I'm telling you, they're the way to go. They they do so many things. I may do a whole episode of the pod on the bandana, an ode to the bandana, because the bandana, it's a good thing. It's the only thing made of cotton that I think that uh, is universally beloved on bike tour, at least by me. Um Next up, uh, wool sweater. I got a great wool sweater that is a lightweight one. I'm not going to bring the heavyweight one because I would like to do some layers. My newest piece of clothing that I got recently is uh, one of those puffer vests because, as I talked about a few minutes ago, folks, I'm here to tell you, the uh, the, 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 the the down stuff, it works really well. So I got a, uh, a down uh, scrunchable vest that I'm super excited about. I'm going to be bringing that along. It uh, basically folds down or scrunches up to about the size of a softball or even less. It's really light. Um, I think it's a great piece of warm weather uh, clothing to bring. So I'm, it's the first time I'll be touring with something like that. Rain jacket and hood because Puget Sound in March. Uh, I got a new p- uh, set of rain pants as well. I'll be bringing those as well. Normally, I bring too many clothes. I've talked about some things here that are some basics that you really, really, really need to bring. I'm going to limit my clothes to basically two sets of clothes, which on the the Portland side of things is probably going to be a little mm, limiting. However, I'll just do a lot of laundry. So I'm going to bring two shirts, uh, a couple pairs of underwear. Is that a little bit of an overshare? Yes, I think it's a bit of an overshare, but two pairs of underwear. And yes, I will be changing it and washing 
I will. Trust me. Uh, rain gloves. I've got a, a neoprene gloves that are really great for the rain. They are lousy for keeping your hands warm otherwise, but they're great in the rain. So I'm going to have those as well. Uh, <laughs> I just glanced at the chat room, which I've been trying to ignore this whole time. Brock, undershare. I like that. That's very solid. Thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> um, just to prove everybody who's listening to this podcast. Yes, indeed, we do have a live chat room going on, and they are prolific. I love it. Um, socks. I'm going to bring a, a pair of smart wool socks. I'm going to bring a pair of waterproof ones that are made by Showers Pass, which is the same company that does my rain jacket, which I like so much. So super excited about those. They work really well. Uh, toiletry bag. I'll have my usual caffeine tablets, my electrolyte pills, my ibuprofen, you know, breakfast to champions. Uh, I'll I'll have a hat with me. I've decided I'm going to be bringing my um, a cold hat because it's going to be cold at night. And then I'm going to be bringing my vintage Seattle Supersonics hat because um, I need the Sonics to come back to Seattle so I can root for them again. Um, I'm I, Undefeated season, though. Undefeated season. That's all I have to say. That's pretty good. Um, helmet I'm going to be bringing because, you know, I should and I will. I'll wear it. Uh, batteries and cable. Probably going to bring two batteries with me. It's probably overkill. I probably will only need one, but I always like to have a little bit of extra because if the weather's nice, I'm planning on taking some more videos so that I can share this all with you. Cables that I need for that. Headphones. Okay, here's where I'm being a little bit of a baby. Um, I'm bringing three, not one, not two, but three different types of headphones for this ride. I'm going to bring my noise canceling Bose headphones. I Did I? Oh, they're over there. So I can't, I, sorry, folks on the live feed, I cannot show you them, but um, I found them on the, it was in a free box and I was really, really shocked when I saw them and I grabbed them immediately. And Kimberly can attest to this. I came in and I'm like all excited about it. And then I open them up and I see that the uh, ear cups were broken. That was the problem. And I'm just like, Somebody threw away perfectly good Bose sound canceling headphones because they didn't understand the power of super glue. Fools. So I have a set of, of free box Bose sound canceling headphones, which I'm going to bring on the plane because I kind of like that. I like having them on the plane. The second pair of way too many headphones is I'm going to bring my Bluetooth earbuds. Why? Because I like riding when I do ride with them in my ears. I prefer the Bluetooth ones. Why? Because wires suck. They just suck when you're dealing with all of that. So I'll bring the Bluetooth with me. And then finally, wired earbuds for when my Bluetooths go kind of... Um, well, out of batteries. That's what the kids say uh, when I, when they do eventually run out of battery juice. And also in case if I need to make any calls uh, with the microphone that's in that. So not one, not two, but three pairs of headphones, all of which are perfectly, perfectly reasonable and very necessary. And I'm not going to wear the noise canceling headphones while I'm riding. I promise you. I pro- I'm, I'm going to look at the camera again. I promise you people on, on, on this dog's um, eye that... Uh, <laughs> I promise not to wear the the noise canceling headphones while I ride. You, that is my promise to you. Um, what else do we have? Uh, the iPhone, because uh, I use that as a live camera. I'm looking at it right now and uh, use it for podcasting and all sorts of great stuff. It's a very helpful thing. By the way, the iPhone 8 camera, oh man, it is really, really good. The pictures that I'm going to have on this tour, way better than any others, I think, um, unless it's raining and there's terrible scenery, but we'll see how that goes. Uh, three water bottles. Uh, I am now uh, off of the water bladders, and I'm going with three water bottles. I don't think water is going to be much of an issue on this trip, so I think everything should be all good. I'm going to be bringing two locks because I fear getting the Brompton stolen so much. Um, I've got something. It's a lock out of Portland, Oregon uh, called Auto Lock, a O-T-T-O. By the way, Auto is also the name of the Syracuse University orange mascot, so I was really, really into that. And by the way, I got the orange version of that. Again, more oversharing than you all probably needed. Um, I'm also going to be bringing a folding lock as well just to have the double lock system. Um, There are going to be times when I'm going to have to go into a store and lock up the bike, and uh, I'm just terrified of losing that Brompton. I think that it would um, be a little bit too tempting of a target. So by double locking it, I'll feel a little bit better for all of that. I think the backpack and all the other stuff that's on it is going to befuddle any would-be thieves. So (laughs) we'll we'll see how it goes. I'm also going to try to keep the bike with me as much as possible. If I can uh, uh, roll it into stores, I'll do that. Uh, Finally, my wallet because uh, people in the Pacific Northwest require payment for goods and services, I hear, I'm told. So I've got uh, a few ads that I also wanted to bring, and as it turned out, um, I can bring them because I have tons of space, tons of space. Uh, Sleep clothes. I always bring a, 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 a spare set of clothes that are exclusively for sleeping. I'm telling you, people, 
uh, the cotton t-shirt, your uh, extra pair of underwear, just to get out of your clothes uh, when you are at the end of the day. It is awesome. Even if you aren't uh, going to be taking a shower or something like that, just great to get into some dry clothes. And they are exclusively for sleeping, and that is it. And they come off, and you put on other biking clothes the next day. A uh, spare set of pants, because frankly, I think that I'm going to get wet, and it'll probably be a good idea to have two, sp- two pairs of pants. The uh, second pair will be my quick dries. Um, they are ugly. They are cargo pants and I do not care for them. Uh, I do not want to wear them when at all possible, but I'll have them if necessary. Um, flip-flops or sandals. I believe I've got a pair of biking sandals that may or may not still be usable or a pair of flip-flops. It may be 38 degrees at night. Um, and flip-flops may be a bad idea, but I like, uh, Going back to the sleep clothes idea, I love getting myself out of the shoes and the socks that I've been riding in all day uh, when I get to camp. It feels a lot better. It feels a little more humane. I'm going to be able to bring those, as it turns out. Uh, the faux pro, my fake GoPro, um, I believe I'm going to be bringing that. I often find it to be more trouble than it's worth, but I think I'd like to get some more video on this trip, so I'll be bringing the faux pro. And I may bring my good stove just in case one of the towns I go through has uh, the type of butane propane mix, um, that little canister thing. Sometimes they're hard to find. If I, it, it, the stove is so small that it's not a big deal to have it, um, but I would take it 100 times out of 100 over those ESPIT stoves. Um, the ESPIT stove is great. I I consider it more of an emergency stove than anything else, but for this trip, it's going to be what I've got because I can't fly with fuel. And the uh, ESPIT tabs, uh, for whatever reason, they get through security. Wait, is somebody recording this? Oh, okay. Never mind. I won't be flying with them. I'll be buying them in the Puget Sound area or something. Okay, um, set up. Talked about the Brompton. Obviously, we got that. Stealth mode, very, 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 very necessary as you fly and when you're on buses and things like that. Uh, Pro tip for you Brompton folks, you cannot get the 16-inch wheels inside the uh, front rack of most of the uh, types of buses out there. So if you end up with a driver that insists that you put the bike on the front rack, you'll be able to show them, hey, yo, this won't work. So that's why stealth mode and I'll practice my very friendly, hey, pretend this is a stroller. We'll see how that works. Um, The front shoulder bag pannier, I mean, I'm going to be doing a a video that will be available hopefully in the show notes at pedalshift.net slash 108 showing that off. A little bit of a hack, uh, use the zip ties and a a friend, um, a mysterious James's uh, former girlfriend uh, actually uh, hooked me up with this. She's a friend of mine as well. And um, we, uh, I, I have to be honest, it's it's turned out pretty good. She didn't have need for an over-the-rack style pannier, and I was able to use that to my advantage, and it's going to be great. So I'll be bringing that along. I'll show you that in the video later on. That can hold things that I need for quick stuff. Like, think of it uh, like a handlebar bag, you know, a water bottle, hat, locks, wallet, lights, uh, the tube, uh, things like that. Um, that's all going to be in that. The backpack, I talked about that. We're going to be using the, the saddle dowel trick, as I talked about. Also, uh, both bags are not waterproof, like not at all. And I have ring covers for both of them. We all know that ring covers are useless <laughs> for the most part. So I'm going to do some redundant waterproofing by doing the old backpacker trick of using a trash bag or a uh, trash compactor bag inside of the backpack as well. And maybe using some Ziplocs as necessary in the other bag. Um, I'm, I'm really expecting this to be a kind of a wet ride. Um, I don't mind wet rides. I don't love them, but, um, I want to go on this ride. I want to ride in March and you know, it, it, this, this looks like a fun trip. So, uh, my tent has two great vestibules. You've seen it. Uh, if you've seen pictures of it, uh, shock it's orange, right? Uh, the two vestibules will allow me to have wet gear to be outside of the tent so I can keep the inside as dry as possible. I'll have the folded Brompton on one side, any wet gear on the other. But of course, it's not going to rain because it's you're getting your, uh, your your winter storm right now, Pacific Northwest, and it's dropping two whole inches of snow on the Portland metropolitan area, and we will rebuild. Next up on the show, I want to share a little bit of fun news. We uh, had the big reveal here of the great tour that I'm really excited about. But next week's show, next week, episode 109 of the pod, we've got to chat with somebody that I've been really wanting to chat to for a long time. And it was awesome. 
Russ Roca from The Pathless Pedaled, and I had a really awesome chat uh, just yesterday as I sit here and record this, but it will be coming out next week. I also did that as a video as well. Now, I don't know if the video turned out because I have not looked at the video yet, but if the video is good, that also will be released on the Pedal Shift YouTube channel as well. So I am super excited to be uh, uh, chatting up with Russ. We talked about Bromptons, we talked about touring, we talked about uh, bicycle travel and the future and all sorts of stuff like that. Man, it was fun and it was cool. And I really want to thank Russ for uh, jumping in and doing that. It was really cool. So that'll be coming out episode 109 a week from Thursday. That'll be March 1st, I believe it'll be. Uh, Normally that would be an off week, but I'm too excited about this interview. It's coming out. And then we'll take the next week off, I think, or maybe the following week. I'll tell you what, people. I'm not going to commit to my schedule, but I do want to say that there will be an off week somewhere in there so that I can go on a bike tour, which I spent most of this podcast talking about. So that's when the off week will be happening in the month of March. So very excited. Join next week. Um, in addition to, of course, checking out this video from this show, episode 108 over at the Pedal Shift YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash pedal shift, probably, I assume. Just Go to pedalshift.net and then click on the YouTube thing. It'll be there. You can check out the video for that show. And we like to close out the show as we do every week with a big thank you to all of the supporters of the show through the Pedal Shift Society. If you like what you hear, you can help maintain Pedal Shift as an independent listener-supported voice while expanding the offerings. We're talking a buck, two bucks, five bucks a month. That helps with the cost of hosting the podcast and the website. You can do it for a bit and cancel any time. One-shot support is welcome. If you're not into the small monthly thing, check it out at pedalshift.net slash society. On to the society. Ethan Georgie, Kimberly Wilson, Caleb Jenkinson, Cameron Lane, Andrew McGregor, Michael Hart, Josiah Matthews, Keith Nagel, Brock Dittus, Thomas Skato, Seth Krieger, Marco Lowe, Terrence Manson, Noah Schroer, Harry Telgatis, John Sikorsky, Richard Killian, Chris Barron, Brian Wren, Mark Van Ram, Brad Hipwell, Paul Mulvey, Stuart Buchan, Todd Stutz, Mr. T, Roxy Arning, Nathan Poulton, Stephen Dickerson, Vince LaGreco, Ruth Divorcey, Michelle Miller, Matthew Lewis, Michael Baker, Billy Crafton, Paul Culbertson, Scott Culbertson, Matt Perry, Danielle Jepson, Cody Florchinger, Tom Beninati, Bobby Rupel, Roy Everett, Greg Braithwaite, John Mayer, William Cairns, and Sandy Pizio, and all folks who make this show happen. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift Project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available. No pugs were injured in the production of this podcast. No, zero pugs were injured. Thank God. All right.